Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, if you are just joining us, you know that I have decided to torture myself. This playthrough of Pokemon Emerald, you know, it was pretty normal up to this point, but I've decided that I really, really want to use a Feebas because I've never done it. And, uh, so here we are <clears throat> in Route 119. We're fishing in the river. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get started because we don't have any time to waste. Um, so again, for those of you that don't know or are just joining us, um, we have to find Feebas in one of six tiles in this river. And we have to fish in every single tile to see where it is. <laughs> um, at least... Hopefully we don't have to fish in every single tile. Um, because that would make me very sad. Um, especially because some of the tiles we don't have access yet. Access to yet. Um, but again, it's not likely that we'll only be able to find Feebas up where we don't have any access yet. Um, and just as a reminder, we are searching with the old rod because you can catch Feebas with any of the three fishing rods in uh, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Um, at least in Emerald, I'm pretty sure, according to the things I found online. Um, but the old rod, it takes less time to hook something, and there are only two other options of the Pokemon that you can find. Whereas the good rod, for example, you can find a third Pokemon. Um, we are not getting very good luck in this tile, unfortunately. There we go. And just to kind of set more ground rules here, we are looking for three... Uh, sorry. <laughs> We're looking for about six encounters on each tile. That was the third one. That's why I had three in my brain. Um... And if we get six encounters in each tile, that should pretty definitively know where we can or cannot catch Feebas. Um, because in a tile where you can catch Feebas, there is a 50% chance of finding it. Um, and when you do find the correct tile, you can just fish up Feebas to your heart's content. You can catch as many as, you many as you'd like. Um, and honestly, I'm probably going to look to catch like 10. Because um, we need to find one with a like a certain nature. Um, oh, that was our fifth encounter here. There we go. Um, we need to find one with a certain nature. And according to my little cheat sheet here, it needs to be rash, quiet, modest, or mild. Um, and that will be very important for us because those natures like the kind of poke blocks. Okay, that was our sixth encounter, so now we just move over one and start fishing again. Um, uh... Those natures are the natures that like the Pokeblocks that increase beauty. Um, because if we have a Feebas of a different nature, it will still eat those Pokeblocks, but it might not like them. Um, and that's something that you want. Okay. There's two. This might be one of my more low-key streams um, because I did say previously that I want to give <laughs> at least one solid stream to trying to catch Feebas um, to see if we can find one on stream. Um, and if not in this stream, I might give it a go just trying to find where it is off stream so that way 
um, you know, if you all are watching episodes, you don't just have, you know, just me looking for a Feebas for forever. Um, I believe this is our fourth encounter. It's our third or fourth encounter. It's so funny. People watching this after the fact are going to be so, like, <laughs> he is miscounting so much. <laughs> I'll be miscounting pretty, pretty constantly. It is kind of annoying in terms of looking for encounters that it's raining. Um, it does wonders for the vibes. Um, because honestly, if there is any route, even in the history of Pokemon, where you are searching for a really rare spawn like this. Um, this is probably one of the better ones. It's a super, super cute, super lovely, super vibey route. Um, all right, I don't know if that was five or six, so we're gonna look for one more for good measure. There we go. All right. Tis a tentacool. Yeah, and there will be a lot less um, discussion on the gameplay side of things. Um, especially just because there's going to be ve very little gameplay to happen <laughs> in this stream. We're just we're just looking for our boy or our gal, Phoebus. Um Hold on. Before we do anything... I just need to double check something. Okay. All right, it does not look like, I was just like, does Feebas need to be female? Because <laughs> that is sometimes a condition. Like they kind of start incorporating like male and female conditions for evolution. Because um, if we caught a Feebas that we could not evolve, I would cry. I would simply weep. Um, a tentacool. But, um, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you like this video. If you are also watching it on YouTube, go ahead and leave a comment. Have you ever used Feebas before? Have you ever caught Feebas in Emerald? I have caught Feebas before. Hey, Tech, how are you? Um, I have caught a Feebas before, however, I did it in Platinum. Um, and to catch Feebas in Platinum, it's actually quite similar to the method that we have here in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Um, only there are, there's a lot more real estate, or a lot less, I should say. It's a lot, um, there's a lot less ground to cover when it comes to trying to find one. Um, cause yeah, here on this route, there are a lot of tiles, <laughs> a lot. Um, you are wondrous. Ah, oh, good to, good to hear that. Almost done with work. Um, that is lovely. What line of work are you in tech? If you don't mind me asking. There we go. All right. I believe that was five or six. I feel pretty comfortable moving on. Okay. And as I understand it, it's not the tile where you're sitting. It's the tile you're fishing. It's like, because technically where we are sitting on the floating Pokemon is not the tile where our fishing rod is going in. Um, that's not how the fishing mechanic works in this game. There we go. I should get used to that surf music at least for a while. Um, once we get close to somewhere we can uh, be by the shore, it will be nice to get that gorgeous Route 119 theme going um, to accompany our search. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Oof. 
I gotta love that seltzer. I'm a big seltzer fan. If any of you have watched me before, you know that I'm usually always drinking one. <laughs> um, I usually get kind of like the off-brand ones from, Kro from Kroger. Um, if you're a West Coast person, Kroger and Ralph's are the same thing. I used to live in LA, so I would shop at Ralph's all the time. Um, funny enough, my Kroger card is actually a Ralph's card. Um, but my parents got me some LaCroix. I'm not sponsored by LaCroix. Although I would like to be, LaCroix, if you want to give me money and free drinks, I will sponsor you. As long as you're not, you know, a horrific company or anything. And I don't think you are, not that I know of. <laughs> but yeah, I always be drinking a seltzer. I find them to be so refreshing. Um, and a lot of people don't like how they're not that sweet. Um... But, you know, at this point, like a lime seltzer, it, it like tastes like Sprite to me at this point, you know? Let's see. Ah, uh, you don't have Ralph's in Washington. Maybe the same thing as Fred Myers. That might be true. I don't really know. Um, that's very interesting. And you live in Washington State, right? Yeah, maybe that's just a California thing, Ralphs. Um, one thing that I did used to get from Ralphs that were incredible um, was this mochi ice cream. It was so good. Um, you could get them in a box, because you can get them here in a box um, I live in Ohio, um, but at the Ralph's where I lived in Glendale specifically, um, they had like a little like freezer where you could like take your little tongs and get like a different selection of different flavors like vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, whatever, um, and pick up all the different mochi ice cream that you want. And it's definitely like way too expensive for what it is um but it is just so delicious and that dough is mm, so good um let's see you've got winco super cheap groceries interesting i've actually never been to washington state i heard it's beautiful um i think that is where the american pokemon company is located is in Washington State. Is that right, Tech? I'm pretty sure that's right. Like, I think they're near Seattle. Um, or something like that. Alright. We're moving on. Next row. <laughs> I really hope it's under the bridge. That would be fun. Um, excuse me. Ah, super rainy all the time. That is what I hear. Los Angeles was the exact opposite. Um, in a way that was worse than you would think. Um, a lot of people really like how it never rains in LA. But, you know, it causes for water shortages and droughts. Um, and things of that nature. Fires. <laughs> um, that's not so good. Um, when it comes to Southern California. Oh, it's 80 degrees today in Washington. That's nice. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's about 80 degrees here, too. Um, yeah, it's a pretty nice day today, honestly. Like, sunny, 75, 80. Um, Ohio does have gorgeous summers. Uh, there we go. I believe this is our third of this tile. A nice tentacle. Also, if anybody's watching this, everything that I have read says that it does not matter what rod you use, you can find a Feebass. If I can't find a Feebass with an old rod, please someone tell me now. <laughs> I am almost positive that's the case. Um, 
But if it's not, help a brother out. Please and thank you, so I don't waste my entire life. Um, and this is so interesting, because when it comes to playing Pokemon, um, I was talking about how I had used a Feebas before um, in Emerald, but I have never been, like, the one to shiny hunt or do super, like, time-intensive things like this. Um, really, I just... Playing through this for the first time on stream, I just really thought it would be a cool thing to include. Um, and to really show new players, like, this super secret hidden gem is there for you. Um, and just how it is obtained. Alright, so we're moving to the, this tile where I was sitting. And we're just going back and forth. We're snaking all the way through. Oh, I should... I should keep track of the tiles. Um, hold on, I'm going to do that really quick. Hold on, I have our little note here that I'm going to pull up. Okay, so Feebas, tiles, searched. Um, let's try this. We have... So I'm on the end here. Oops, hold up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we've searched eleven thus far, and this will be twelve. Okay. Trying to stay organized here, gang. Alright, so this is our second encounter. Great. Um. Um, perfect. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah, Utah's around the same hemisphere. Yeah! Probably right. Um, Utah is gorgeous. Um, I remember when we were driving to LA, we stopped in I believe is I believe it's pronounced Moab, M O A B, um, kind of where a lot of the cool rock formations are and like Arches National Park. Um, we didn't stop at Arches National Park, but we were like. We still did see a lot of cool stuff, and we were, like, right outside it. So we were right near kind of where all of those rock formations are. Um, that was really, really cool. The one thing we did do on our way when we moved out to L.A. was go to the actual Grand Canyon National Park, which was crazy, dude. Like, honestly... Like, seeing the Grand Canyon is, like, a cliche at this point, but, dude, holy crap. It's so crazy. It, it, it really, it boggles your mind. Um, it really, really does. And again, that is cliche, but I don't really have a better way to describe it. It's just, it's crazy. It really is incomparable. You are you are so correct. Um, so this will be space number thirteen. But honestly, the only thing I've seen that compares to the Grand Canyon is um, um, Yosemite National Park in California. It was so truly gorgeous. One of the coolest places I've ever seen. We kind of went in the springtime, I think like April or May we went. Um, they actually would not let us go without like chains for our tires. 
which I've never had before. Because, you know, like, it snows in Ohio, but we never, like, are on, like, tough terrain. Ohio's pretty flat. But there, when you're kind of driving around the mountains a little bit um, in Yosemite, they, like, they said that they would, like, like, people or rangers or whatever would, like, check your car um, to see if you had them. And so I was, like, right before we went, I was really stressed out, like, looking for tire chains because I had never gotten them before. Um, and it turns out we didn't even need them. <laughs> But, anyway, uh, the time of year that we went, it was, like, a really wet time of year. Like, there was a lot of, like, ice or, like, snow melt um, because it was the springtime. So the waterfalls were super active. And pretty much anywhere we looked, there was a waterfall. It was. And when we got, like, the whole big view of the Yosemite Valley, it was incomparable. Um, I'm trying to, I feel like if I speed through the fishing thing, it'll, I'll miss it, there we go. Um, it was gorgeous tech, it was amazing. Um, the Yosemite Valley is, like I said, one of the most gorgeous things I've ever seen. Um, and there is the big cliff there, El Capitan. Um, so this will make tile 14. Um, oops. And it is actually the subject of a really cool documentary. Um, you suggest visiting Yellowstone. Yeah, I've never been to Yellowstone. Uh, that would be great if we make our way out west again. Um, that would be really, really awesome. Uh, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yes, El Capitan, the cliff. It is the subject of a documentary because there is a guy who decided that he wanted to... Um, whatchamacallit, climb El Capitan with no ropes. He wanted to free solo it. And the documentary is called Free Solo. Um, basically, this guy has, like, no fear receptors in his brain. And a lot of the documentary are people in his life, be life begging him not to do it because <laughs> they don't want him to die. <laughs> and he's like, nope, I'm doing it anyway. Um, and I won't tell you what happens. But it's crazy. It was maybe one of the most kind of like heart tugging, like just anxious things I've ever watched. Um, it was crazy. And we actually watched it the night we got back from Yosemite. Because if you don't know, this it is a sheer cliff. Like it is flat. It is not like an incline. Um, it's like super duper mega advanced rock climbing and he did it with no rope assistance whatsoever um insane i mean truly insane and just straight up not smart let's see all right i'll do one more here and then we can move along um, yeah, this episode is really interesting because we're just, we're just shooting the breeze. Ah. So, Tech, you are saying that apparently the best rod to find Feebas is the Super Rod because the only, um... The only other Pokemon you can catch with it is Carvana. <sighs> yeah, I do get that. But the the one upside of the old rod is one, we have it now. <laughs> um, all right, Tentacool, it's fine, let's move along. And there are still only Magikarp and uh, Tentacool with the old rod. 
And honestly, like, I just, I just want to, I want to keep moving. I want to keep moving and grooving. Um, okay, so this will be 15. And if I can, I would love to get Feebas as early as possible. Because um, I think the Super Rod... We have to do a few more things before we can get the Super Rod. The Super Rod is is quite a bit later in our playthrough. Um, and I love how you can get an encounter with only one kind of like tug of the, pole, the fishing pole um, with the old rod. Because... When you're using the good rod and the super rod, you see how it has those dots, and then it'll say, oh, a bite. For the old rod, you only have to do it once. But when you click A on the oh, a bite uh, message, it'll say, if Pokemon's on the hook. But if you have a different rod, it'll just do the dots again, and then you have to do it again. And, like, I get it, because you're, like, catching, like, a bigger, more powerful Pokemon, so you have to, like, take more time to, to reel it in. Um, but, uh, it is great that there's only the one layer of it. But I will show you, if you get a bite and you don't press A, like, hold on, let me, I'll show you my hands. <laughs> it got away. You have to press A within a certain amount of frames, um, for it to register as a catch. Which is... Which is pretty cool. I do like how in other games you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about, like, reeling it in. Um, but this does give this game kind of like a level of, you know, realism, honestly. Okay. This is our second encounter here, I believe. We have our, our good old gal Magikarp. And the good news is, once you do search these tiles, um, there we go, um, you don't really have to worry about searching them again, because apparently, and I didn't know this, the only way the tiles will change is if you talk to someone in Duford Town, and they will tell you like a trendy phrase or something like that and when they tell you the new one the tiles change i don't know why that's the thing that affects it but it is um and i don't plan on talking to that person in duford town so i don't plan on them ever changing <laughs> hopefully <laughs> i believe that was our third encounter there we go you just read that god too good um so, you don't have to talk to that person. I don't think you do. I don't think you have to talk to that per person for Feebas to show up in the river at all. I haven't heard anything about that. Um, all I know is that the tiles will change if you talk to that person in Doofer. Um, Alright. So, let's go down one surf that tile just under the bridge I do want to get to a certain landmark um, in today's stream if we can just so it's easier to kind of like pick up where I left off do 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 It says, if you can't find it in any of the tiles after three or four attempts, then you should go there and change the phrase to get a better chance. Oh, I see. Um, so, what you're saying is, if I, ser yeah, if I search through all of these tiles and I can't find it, then I need to talk to her. Um, that makes sense. I believe this is our second encounter here.
Yes. Okay. I feel like there's no way we won't find it if we search all the tiles, right? Because, like I said, I know there are some above the waterfall that we don't have access to yet. But there's no way all of them are up there. Or at least the chances are pretty low. Let's see. Alrighty. And what I will do um, is if I can't find a Feebas on stream and I decide to kind of like continue my hunt off screen, I will um, at least show you me catching one. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. There's a small chance you won't find it, but there are some bug tiles on the cliff face. Yes, this actually reminds me um, of finding a Heracross in Pokemon Crystal, um, which we did do for the Crystal playthrough. Um, uh, I've stopped keeping track of the tiles, it's okay. Um, okay, so this is our first encounter. Um, because the way you find Heracross in Crystal is so weird, because it's dependent... Yes, well that's because I looked something up. <laughs> um, it's dependent on your trainer card for Heracross. Um, whatever, your, or your, whatever your trainer ID is, there will be like... A certain number, a cert, like certain tiles where you can find Heracross. However, a lot of the tiles where you can find Heracross don't even line up with headbutt trees. So that's why in Crystal, I had to wait until Ecruteague City to find my Heracross. Um, where you can get them as early as Azalea Town, at least in Crystal. Um, but there just weren't any tiles that, had, that were on a headbutt tree in Azalea Town that would have a hair across on it. And I think that's kind of what you're talking about. Um, there we go. Okay. Alright. Okay. I feel good. I feel like this one is searched. Yeah, I feel like uh, when I started, I was very much into, like, six um, encounters. But I, I feel good with four or five <laughs> at this point. Um, but yeah, really the only reason I found um, that hair across so easily was because I knew where to find one. And, like, someone made... Someone made something online that indicates where Heracross will be based on your trainer ID. Um, if anyone has made anything like that for finding Feebass and Emerald, please shout it out. <laughs> that would be great. Um, so we don't spend the rest of our lives fishing these tiles. I'll find it this time. Appreciate you. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. That was encounter number three. <laughs> yes. Thank you. This is the one. This is the Feebass. Ah, uh, not quite. Not quite. Da, 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 da. Alright. I'll do one more because I lost track. There we go. Okay. One thing, I wish that it didn't... Um, when I sped up the music, I wish that it didn't kind of like 
when I sped up the game, rather, I wish it didn't make the music sound bad and shrill and terrible. Um, because I would have my hand on speed up most of the time. Um, <laughs> I could catch a tentacle and name it Feebass. That's actually a, that's actually a pretty good point. Um, This is our second encounter here, I'm pretty sure. I will turn the music off a little bit, actually, so I can more consistently use speed up. The only thing is I can't use speed up when I'm actually fishing. That That is the annoying thing, because then I'll like miss my chance. But let me see. Yeah, it got away. <laughs> My reaction time isn't that good. There we go. There's probably going to be a lot of shots. Train that hand-eye coordination. You're correct. There's probably going to be a lot of shots of me just like <laughs> staring at the screen. All right. I think we can do one more here. Uh, da, da, da. Perfect. Okay. Moving along. Uh, but no music is driving me crazy. I love having the music. That's part of the joy. Even if it is a little shrill part of the time. Go. <laughs> I can mute it and sing instead. <laughs> that is true. I suppose I could. Um, could do is I could play sorry I'm losing track of myself here Go away, Red Feebass. It's so true. That's pretty much all Magikarp is. Um, but Feebass is like... People kind of describe it as like a Magikarp ripoff, maybe. But I feel like Feebass is actually like a really interesting kind of like counterpart or spiritual successor to Magikarp. I don't view it as more of like a ripoff because Magikarp is all about being like a pathetic weakling that turns into something big and ferocious. But a Feebass is more about like something that is really ugly that turns into something beautiful. It's just kind of like, it's just a different vibe. Um, and it, it is kind of like the same conceit, but it's a very different, very different thing. Yeah, Magikarp 2.0, that's right. Um, okay, so let's go down here. Oop, hello. Do not throw off my groove, Bernie. Okay. I am facing that direction, right? Almost positive. Well, it'll show it here. Yes, I am. <laughs> um, okay. For real. Um, yeah, they are just as bad as the crystal phone calls. I feel like these phone calls are even longer sometimes. Um, 
But it is nice that you can kind of like more easily rematch people and they won't all they won't always call you when they want a rematch. I did actually say I'll kind of show this off in the middle of this if I can. Um, because we have this match call feature. I don't know if anyone will yet. But yeah, right here, Aroma Lady Rose. You see how she has that little Pokeball next to her? That means that she is ready for a rematch, which is really useful when you're looking to kind of mine some more experience and you're just like, who can I rematch? It's really cool. Um, anyone else? Yeah, a couple more. Great. So we might have to take on a few of those later. Um... I believe this is our third encounter. Too. Oh yeah, it does, it is kind of interesting that you can't delete them. Um, I guess they just want you to always have access to those rematches if you want them, which I guess is cool. I'm fine with that. Um, all right, this is our fourth encounter. Alright, encounter number five. Let's go for it. Da -da -da -da. Again, I'm probably miscounting terribly. Um, but uh, let's see. If you are still with us on, you know, the replay gang or on YouTube, What's your favorite Pokemon? I love this question. Um, I have a lot of favorite Pokemon. Um, my number one all time is Lugia, of course. It's my it's my starting soon screen. There's the boy right there. Um, but uh, yeah, Lugia is my all time favorite, pretty consistently ever since I watched Pokemon the movie two thousand. Um, but I do love a lot of the other generation two Pokemon. Um, I would say, like, Lugia, Espeon, Skarmory, Ampharos, they're all my favorite. Uh, th those are kind of, like, probably around my top five. Typhlosion, Hisuian Typhlosion is amazing, I love. Um, ooh, Haunter, that's interesting. Um, I do love Haunter, I mean, Haunter's great. Those like that. Uh, those disconnected arms is a really nice, uh, really nice design touch. I believe this was encounter three or four, so let's let's assume it was three. All right, so this will be four. Great. Ooh. Tech, you like? Do you like spiders? Are you a fan of spiders? I mean. I do enjoy Ariados and Galvantula as Pokemon. Spiders in real life make me very, very scared. Um, I actually read that there's a new, like a, a species of spider that was native to Asia, but has invaded like the East Coast and they can like fly. I hate that. You love spiders, that's so interesting. I have not met many people in my life that love spiders. Um, you and you and uh, Robert Irwin should be friends. Um, I feel like I... I don't know if I've said it on stream before, but uh, I have always told my wife, and I don't think she, she cares about Australia, but I'm just like, if you ever decide that it is your life's dream to go to Australia, you will have to go without me, baby. Um, I don't want anything to do with that. Um, but that's very interesting that you love spiders. Why spiders, Tech? What is it about spiders? I mean, I get that a spider is a cool creature. Like, it is kind of objectively cool. Um, but it's also really scary to me. Um, Huntsman's. Is that, uh, is that the big one? Is that the big one in, in Australia? Um, because I know there are those really, really, really big ones that kind of like, that Australians like because they like keep actually terrible pests out. Um, they're the ones in Australia. Okay. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, because as far as I know, they aren't, like, harmful, the really, really, really big Australian spiders. Um, but they, like, you know, do good pest control, as far as I understand it. Um... I do hate those times when you don't get a nibble at all. Because it's like, come on, guys, we got places to be. Alright. I'll do one more on this tile. But yeah, Galva Galvantula's sick. Galvantula's a really cool uh, idea for a Pokemon. I, I, especially kind of like that Electro Web concept. That's, that's, really, that's really neat. Um, ooh, Ariados is also really great. This is a game I'd like to play on stream. I haven't played it as much as this, so I won't have, like, great expertise. Um, but I would love to play new Pokemon Snap. And old Pokemon Snap, honestly. Old Pokemon Snap's amazing. Um, but new Pokemon Snap is incredible. Um, and I feel like it's kind of just slept on by people. Um... Because I had been wanting a more expansive Pokemon Snap for years and years, like ever since I was a kid. Um, excuse me. And then they finally made one, and it's awesome! It's so cool! Um, and a really, really cool, like, spiritual successor to the original. And also, kind of like the final boss level in that game was something that I did not expect and was super cool. And it really made me appreciate the the kind of like final boss Pokemon that you encounter there. Um, which I won't spoil if you've never played the game. Um, because I really think that any Pokemon fan should play new Pokemon Snap. It's delightful. Delightful. Um... But yeah, so Haunter, Ariados, and Galvantula. Those are that's those are pretty interesting picks. Not ones I've heard. I do like all those Pokemon though. Let's see. Uh okay, let's see. One of the reasons you love them, it's built-in pest control. That's right. Spiders are totally harmless if they're not threatened. Uh, but it's sort of a loop considering that people are afraid of them, thus threatening the spider through their fear. Uh, I see. Jumping spiders killed your fear as a kid. They're so friendly and curious. I want a giant one as a pet. <laughs> no, I'm happy to read the paragraph. We are literally just sitting here hunting Feebas. We are. We're just chatting, man. Um, I love it. Um, but that is really interesting. That is a really cool, uh, really cool way to look at it. Um, and it's like, you know, I do get it. I, I certainly get it. Um, they scare me a lot, but I but I get it. I get it, okay? <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, pretty much all of my favorite Pokemon are in, are in Generation Two. Really, my my hearts my hearts in Johto, man. Um, I'm pretty sure this is our last encounter for this tile. Okay. Um, Johto is really what um, sparked my love for the franchise. Yeah, because I think I described the reason we started with Yellow was because Yellow was my, my first Pokemon game. Um, but I don't think I had beaten it before I beat Silver. Because, um, you know, I played it when I was really young and I, like, got stuck and gave up and, you know... Um, I think the first time I ever played through Yellow, I stopped, like, before or after Lieutenant Surge. My guess is I didn't know that you had to go, like, back up to Cerulean and, like, cut to get to Rock Tunnel to progress through the game. That's what I assume. Um, and that's probably where I abandoned my first ever playthrough of Pokemon Yellow. But yeah, I played through Pokemon Silver... Um, I beat Pokemon Silver, rather, before I beat a, gen a Generation 1 game. Generation. Um, <laughs> let's see. That's going to be two encounters there. But 
Texol, the uh, the ambassador for spiders nationwide. They're misunderstood. Oh, that reminds me. You ever watch James and the Giant Peach? Um. Oh. <laughs> you stopped playing yellow because you couldn't beat Brock or Reed. <laughs> that makes sense. Yes, you've seen James and the Giant Peach. James and the Giant Peach, he goes into the Giant Peach, and he becomes friends with all the bugs that live in there, and he becomes friends with Miss Spider, and Miss Spider is so lovely, I will say. Uh, spiders scare me, but Miss Spider, oh, she's a lovely person. A lovely spider. Um, James and the Giant Peach is a, a big movie for me. I love that movie. I've actually been meaning to watch it with my wife um, for a long time because she's never seen it. Um, and I actually really enjoy that type of animation. Um, I've seen parts of Coraline. I really want to finish it, <laughs> um, because I really liked what I saw. And, uh, oh crap, I wasn't paying attention. And Nightmare Before Christmas is probably one of my favorite movies of all time. Certainly one of my favorite Disney movies. Um, oh, I was pressing the wrong button. Well, how about that? I think we got about two more encounters on this tile, and then we'll move on. Oh, when she weaves him the hammock. Oh, yes, you're right. Oh, that's a great movie. Highly recommend it, folks. I think it's from, like, 96? 90, late 90s um, is when Giant Peach came out. Ooh, Wallace and Gromit. I never watched Wallace and Gromit. I'm sure I would like it. I know... That those same same people made Chicken Run. I enjoyed Chicken Run as a child. It's a delightful film. Um, but uh, only the old ones, though. I see. I see. You're a purist. I understand. All right. So now we are just just poking out from under the bridge here. Um, and just think, we have been at this for nearly an hour, baby. And this is how far we got. Oh gosh, it's incredible. So I feel like for this stream, I wanna get this row done, like just under the, like just peeking out of the bridge here. And then we'll probably call it for today. Cause again, you know, I, I it's, it's, it's interesting. I don't wanna bore people just hunting for a fish, but, uh, you know, it's part of the journey. I want to, I, like I said, I wanted to give at least one episode <laughs> dedicated to hunting Feebas. Um, but at some point, we're going to have to get this show on the road, you know. Because at the end of the day, I am playing this game, but I want you to enjoy yourself. I want it to be fun entertainment for you. Um... <laughs> hey, do, Tech, I am glad you're enjoying yourself. That makes me really happy. I appreciate that. Um, I believe that was our second encounter on this tile. I know we've had like a hard time fishing this tile. Okay. And I know that like... Um... I, I know I'm saying tiles, and if you are not familiar with these games, you might not really even know what I mean. Um, in these games, in these old Pokemon games, your character can only move like one, like in like a, in a square basically. And you can move like one to the right, one to the left, one up. Um, you can't move diagonally. You can in later games, but not here. And that's all it means by tile, is just that one little square where your character would walk. Um, or in this case, where your character would surf. Um, let's see. <laughs> you are right. I usually do have a couple people who, who don't chat, but that's okay. If you're just if you're just watching and you don't feel like talking, you don't have to. I'm happy you're here. Um, let's see. I feel like I need two more encounters on this tile to feel to feel safe. To feel safe and warm inside. Um, 
What do you think, Tech? Do you have any other favorites? Any favorite legendaries, perhaps? Um, because Lugia is my favorite Pokemon, obviously my favorite legendary. I'm also a big fan of Kyogre. Love Kyogre. Um, oh, my other favorite legendary is Origin Form Giratina. Um, and that is a Pokemon we will meet later in our journey through Pokemon history here on Silver Cave Gaming. I'm very excited to get to that. Um, that will be a glorious day. Um, but until then, I will let you all Google it or, uh, let your imagination run wild. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, Origin Giratina is so sick. It's really, really cool. Um, okay, so we just fished that one, so now we gotta fish the one I was just on. All right. Yeah, I was actually never a huge fan of regular Giratina. I always thought it was a cool concept, um, but I just didn't like the design that I saw in Diamond and Pearl. And like pretty much absolutely everything in Generation 4, they just made it perfect in Platinum. Platinum is so much better than Diamond and Pearl. It's crazy. It's crazy. Because, like, other games aren't that much of an improvement, you know? And, like, I think Emerald's an improvement from Ruby and Sapphire, but it's mostly just, like, differences, you know? There aren't that many, like, out-and-out -out improvements to me. But, like, Platinum had to, like, fix stuff in, from Diamond and Pearl. Oh, Eternatus. Yeah, I like Eternatus. Um, a good old Generation 8. Um, yeah, Eternatus is cool. I feel like that's another one you don't hear as much. I feel like Eternatus and Origin Giratina kind of have similar vibes. Very kind of, like, doomsday crazy. Um... Ultra Necrozma are very cool. Ah, yes. Black 2 and White 2. I get that. Yeah. Um, yeah, because they are technically sequels. Um, I remember that blew my mind when they did Black and White 2 instead of Gray. Because that, that broke the cycle of the third version. Um, let's see. We'll fish once more on this tile here. You love all things dark and brooding. Um, I, I generally do, too. Um, but uh, speaking of dark and brooding, one of my favorite Generation 3 Pokemon are actually caught on the route after Fortree City. I was really considering using one in this playthrough. Um, I love Absol. Absol is one of my favorites. And we'll definitely see one later in our journey through Emerald here. Um, but, uh, Absol's really, really great. Such a cool design. Let's see, I believe that was our first encounter here, so this will be number two. And we've got Magikarp. Oops. Mega Absol. I don't know if it's stupid. I don't hate it. But maybe it's not what I would have done, you know? A lot of the Mega forms are, like, really hit and miss. <laughs> some of them, I think, are cool. Some of them are just, like, interesting. <laughs> so that's what you decided to do. I specifically really dislike Mega Heracross. I think Mega Heracross is really ugly. Um, let's see. That was three, so let's do two more. Okay, so just one more. I mean, Mega Gengar is pretty cool. Um, I do enjoy Mega Gengar. Um, one cool thing with Mega Gengar is if you've ever played Pokken Tournament, um, for the Switch, I believe Gengar can turn into Mega Gengar. 
um, in that game. And for those that don't know, Pokken Tournament is a collaboration between the Pokemon franchise and the Tekken franchise. Um, Tekken is kind of like a classic, kind of like side-scrolling, like 2D fighter. It's a lot like Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter. Um, and I love Tekken. Tekken 2 and Tekken 3 are two of my favorite games of all time. We'll probably play them on this channel at some point. Um, and Pokken is like Tekken, but with Pokemon. And it's so cool. And I do have it, but I never play it. I should play it more. It's delightful. Oh, yeah, and Shiny Mega Gengar is white. That is sick. Um, yeah, Pokken is so cool. And there are some... They're not all, like... Pokemon that you would exactly expect to be translated into a fighting game because like you have Gengar and you have like Scizor which is kind of like a fighter you have Machamp, Lucario, those are fighters um, but you also have Pokemon like Chandelure that you can fight as you have Suicune which is sick um, <laughs> yeah Lucario, I mean Lucario is straight up in Smash Bros um so it's definitely made to be in a fighting game. Um, I believe that was our second or third encounter on this tile. Uh, let's see. So let's do two or three more here, just to be safe. Let's do two more. There we go. And then after this tile, we will do just that last one sitting over there to our right. There we go. All right. So not here. Okay. All right. Last tile for the stream. Let's see if we can do it. Last tile magic. Let's go. I think this is going to be the one. Imagine if it was. That would be so crazy. <laughs> that would be... Hype F, bro. Hype F. Let's see. I guess I will mention one more time that I did release my remastered EP ill-equipped with Silver Cave. Um, so if you... And it's actually up on streamers now. So if you enjoy my music or are a supporter of Silver Cave Band, um, please listen to that. The EP is called Ill-Equipped, and I produced it on my own. Um, kind of really like my first stab at it. That's kind of why I wanted to release like a remastered version of what I came up with. Um, and it was really rewarding to release it this week. I had been working on it for a really long time. Um, and again, it's not like, it's not perfect, but it's like, it feels super raw and real and like beautiful in that way. Yes, you do gotta listen now, dude. Thank you. I appreciate that, I really do. Um, but uh, yeah, I originally released it in 2022 and I like, it's just a lot louder now and the master and the mix and master just sounds better. Um, just overall. Let's see. Alright. We're gonna do one more encounter. This is gonna be our last encounter for the stream. Do you think there's a chance we find Feebas? Alright, not on that one. This is Feebas. This is gonna be it. And... Very sad. So, it appears not at this time. Okay, so now we're gonna go down here. We are officially at the edge of the bridge's shadow. That is where we're leaving off. I might do a couple tiles off, off stream just to kind of, just uh, shorten our, shorten our, uh, 
marathon <laughs> here. Um, but Tech, thank you for being here. Those of you watching live, thank you for being here. I really appreciate that. This has been super fun. Um, I will see you all on the next one. I'll probably be back on Monday. Um, kind of have some stuff to take care of this weekend. But other than that, I... Happy hunting. Thank you, dude. Um, I appreciate all of you. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. Have a great life. Peace, kids.